Hi guys, and welcome to the Divine Masculine and um, what is next in the next step to get into alignment reading. I did the Divine Feminine this morning with the lunar energy still present and the sun was just about to rise and coming up and now we have the sun out full force. So I think it's time that we, uh, we see what the energies need to continue to do. And I love my new coffee cup because it is always reminding me every day what I need to do to continue to stay in alignment with my authentic self and my highest vibration. And uh, you don't just have to put coffee in here, whatever you want to be drinking, right? Just remind yourself. I spent a lot of years hustling. Now I'm shifting into what is in alignment with me. And wow, what a difference that can make with your life. Please feel free to check out the Divine Feminine reading, especially if you are a Divine Feminine. You have to get into alignment, right? Two. It's not just about the masculine. You ought to get into alignment as well. So yes, but I, I wanna compare both readings also to see where the energies are at. So. I always think watching both readings can be very beneficial if you're just studying your path. There's nothing wrong with studying your path. It's, are you studying your path from a bird's eye view to learn, to grow, to understand, to be able to have compassion for others, especially others on the path as we all raise the vibration together, we're all connected? Or are you still on the ground? Are you still in the emotions, in the thick of it, in in everything in in the very 3d like way where you're attached to everything and you don't have you know it's about attachment that's what growth is right you're a little seedling you're a little plant you're gonna grow you grow away right you transform you're the serpent you're on the ground then you transform to an eagle connected to source connected to Sun energy it is it's beautiful it's the expansion. And when you look at things from a bird's eye view, that's the gift with the high priestess, right? It's the pause. It's non-reaction. And then, okay, now sit back. Let higher self come in. Don't let ego take over. Because ego is going to act off impulse. And then higher self has to come back in and fix up the mess. And then we know that's where shame and guilt come in. And we don't need that. That's learned. Let's let it go. Hello, son. Hello, sun energy. Woo. So, time to get going, baby. All right, let's see where the divine masculine is at. There we go. Four of Wands, working on stability with spirit present. I love the... I think it's like reminds me very much of the Fibonacci spiral on their way out of here, right? They're learning how to make circles connecting to the feminine energy while still building something stable with the wands. And spirit is there, present with them. Pyramids there connecting to ancestors. They're breaking their ancestral chains, ancestral wounds. It's part of the evolution and the raising of the vibration. Three of Pentacles. So they're, they're actively working on their spiritual quest. This is meeting people on your spiritual quest along the way that help you, that help you see how to, what we were just talking about, how to, where the growth happens with the darkness. The people that you meet along the way that help you change your perception that you know without a shadow of a doubt they're part of your spiritual quest that's where they're at they're meeting people like that right now they're encountering them perceptions change six of pentacles that's the birds you know from the serpent to the bird there has to be an evolution there has to be a process six of pentacles that is the restoring of balance look at them Look at that energy and look at how they are feeling. 
It's like they're standing at that cliff where the fool is and they're standing behind them, like the moon's behind them because they're connecting to the feminine energies, the lunar energies. And they've got all those pentacles in their hand, restoring balance. That's what the, this whole entire reading thus far says. And then we have the Seven of Swords. Now I love it in this deck because this woman is just walking away. The figure, she's just walking away. And she's just got her cape just draped. And it's just her body posture. Like she's just going to walk away from all that shit. She's going to walk away from all of it. He is going to walk away from all of it. Because he's connecting to his feminine energy. His lunar energy with the moon there to intuition, to a path to create something that wasn't there before by facing the darkness. They're facing the darkness. They're actually facing within their path right now. That's where they are. King of Cups, hello. And he has showed up many times, right? This energy and the discussion of how this energy is, oh, Prince of Cups, getting ahead of myself. Wanting to be in alignment already. Look at me. Pause, 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 right? Patience, patience, patience. I need to remember that just like everybody else. Now, Prince of Cups. This energy, it is in the transformational stage. I love it as we were just talking about the serpent right now. Look at the cup and the serpent coming out of, like, coming out of the cup. And the light, the light bulb, like it's just gonna transform. Like it actually is about to transform. Right there, that could be the moment where it just bursts and turns into the eagle with the bird's eye view. But still um, connecting to emotions, Prince of Cup, it cups, it's still cups feminine energy. Even though this is masculine, this is a masculine energy connecting to femininity with the cups represented by the cups right now emotions it's about restoring a balance to become a healer to become connected to nature feminine becomes um more balanced with masculine and masculine becomes more balanced with feminine and transformation Right, and it's just moving away from this Five of Cups energy. Crying over spilled milk, it's gone. Time for a death and transformation. Transformation. It really is. It's just time for a death and transformation. That's what's happening in that cup. Like, look, got a death and transformation in the cup, and the Ace of Cups right there. Like, it's it's. It's gonna happen when it's meant to happen. It's all a process. It's all in divine timing. It's all in the lessons learned. You know, the three of pentacles, that's important. Part of your spiritual quest, you can't just rush that stuff. Now, let's see <clears throat> where is this is where they're at. Um, what they need to do, be doing to be getting into alignment here. To apply to this energy here. So with the Four of Wands, we have the Eight of Chalices, which the Eight of Cups, which is completely true. It's, <laughs> so we're talking about, you know, the Fibonacci spiral and them draw, drawing circles because feminine energy draws circles, masculine draws lines. That's how it's represented in geometry, okay? Now, when they're connecting to their feminine energy, they're going to walk away from what's not serving them in the darkness. Once again, with those cups being present. So they are walking away. They have to walk away. They have to complete that process. They have to com make a completion of walking away what no longer serves them. To fill the cup. So that's why it's not in alignment yet. There's a black swan there, a 
a black bird. I do believe it's a swan. Is it a swan or a goose of some sort? I don't know. There's a black bird. I want to know what that is. Five of chalices, and there we go. That's what I mean. Okay, so here we go. We're seeing what's happening here, right? We just discussed. The transformation is about the five of cups, right? That's what they're working on. Moving away from what does not serve them. What does not fill their cup? What does not fill their soul from ego? What does just instant gratification, instant satisfaction, something that, that, that does not last, it's a high, it's not real. We know what's real, right? What's real is filling the cup. What's real, it sustains. It sustains. They are working on that right now. And that's, I love the representation there of how she's pouring out of the cup. Like just, no, this is not for me. Now in the Eight of Cups, to find the stability, I'm gonna go off and I'm gonna figure out what is. And that's what the masculine energy is doing. And you gotta let them do that. Like if you're in separation, you gotta let go because that's codependency, so let go. And you gotta let them go on their spiritual quest and let them figure out what lights them up, what fills their cup. Because when they fill up their cup, they are a vibrational match to you with your full cup. And that is the Ten of Cups, right? The completion of that with spirit with the Ace of Cups. <clears throat> and spirit, we know. We know that this is with spirit. Spirit is the driving force. Spirit is the wind beneath our wings. Okay. Six of Pentacles. Ooh, hello, Knight of Chalices. And there we go again. Prince of Cups, Knight of Chalices. It's the restoring of balance. They've got that cup, what we just talked about. Now, see, their cup is full. And they're on, they're on a journey now to come and offer it back in restoring balance. You may think they're going out to figure out, like, something other than what they're doing. That's why you need to detach from the energy. You know, don't get caught in your ego. They are figuring out right now how to fill their cup. So they can have something to offer. They need to have something to offer to themselves. The masculine energy needs to feel what that even feels like again. To have something to offer to them in a cup, not in a pentacle. Now, or a sword, right? They get to feel good too. It's, this is all about vibration changing. Now, Seven of Swords. Page of Wands. All right. So there's the firepower. They're walking away to follow their passions. Once again, too, this is about what's lighting them up, their driving force. This is action, forward movement, playing with magic. Like, it's like they found in their cups, they found their gifts, their gifts. They've reclaimed a piece of their childhood themselves and they found their gifts. It's a very beautiful, innocent space for them. For them. What a beautiful space to come into alignment with and the energy at the bottom of the deck. Well, hello, divine masculine. Hello. The horn god. And this is a, very connected to the, the feminine reading. This is kind of blowing my mind because she got the earth mother. So the energy is completely come into alignment and he has the ace of swords and her reading started off with she was her main energy started off as the ace of swords so this is coming into a lab oh my god guys look a 
officially what I'm saying. Both energies now coming into alignment and we have the lady and the Lord, the lovers. So we have the integration of the male and female energies within and then we know what happens within, right? You attract within, you attract it back. And the coming together, the union of that. And now both energies truly 1000% being in alignment and the work that needs to be done. Now, there's gonna be stages, right? But this is this is it, right? And I highly suggest you watch the feminine reading because these are definitely linked. And look, we have the world tree, which is completion now. And what's next? What's next for the lady and the Lord? What's chapter two, three, and four I'm gonna look like? Like, I can hardly wait to find out. What a beautiful path. And see this, guys, the serpent and the bird. Look, the serpent and the bird we were just talking about. It's right there. Oh, frick, I love this. All the seasons, look, all the seasons, the sun, the moon, winter, spring, summer, fall. It's all there, everything, everything all on the one card. This is a brand new deck, I love that. A lot of people go through their decks. I, I, I don't, I, I like getting new decks and getting surprised every time I see them. And I try to get as much of the information as I can, but I really like to intuitively read the cards a lot of the time because I think that's the, you know, you can get caught up in trying to read tarot perfectly and I just, I really think there's a beauty and gift in just intuitively reading these gorgeous images that these artists have applied and then reading the books and what comes, the gifts that the books bring, like the, it, the tarot is gorgeous. Thank you guys for joining me here. This reading is a gift. Now let's see what's, I want to go a little deeper. What's being activated within the hidden realms that we can't see what's to help us get in alignment? What maybe what we cannot see to help the energies start their alignment process. So we're gonna use this deck and then we're gonna see what's good. What's good that's hidden there to jumpstart, to jumpstart the alignment process. And just help us shift our perception, shift our focus, you know? Gain some wisdom to do the work and there it is. The map maker of destiny, authentic purpose, inspiration, free will. Hello, divine masculine. I see you are busy working on authentic purpose, inspiration, and free will. Exciting. Get, get over excited here. But that's great because that means they're cleansing karma and ending codependency and making their own choices, freeing themselves, right? You know what? I don't know why I can't. And that's why. Eat a water, guys. That's why. Okay, this is what good is coming out of it. Now, let's read her. The map maker of destiny. Authentic purpose, inspiration, free will. When the map maker of destiny appears, it's a sign that you're being given an opportunity to transform fate into destiny. A birth, each human being is given a unique map with paths that intersect with one another. Your map of destiny shows all the places you're meant to visit, places where you will be challenged to evolve into the highest aspects of the self. Remember that you're a spark of the divine come to earth to experience itself in human form. As such, your path is unique. It's also somewhat preordained. 
And fate represents the events in your life that were meant to happen that you cannot change. Fate is transformed into destiny according how you resp re respond to your circumstances. Destiny offers you the ability to make great opportunities out of faded experiences. So free will and choice are possible at certain points on your map. Now was one of those times. You're faced with a relationship of circumstances brought to you by fate. How you respond will lead you into your perfect destiny. Your ally may assume the form of a soulmate, come to heal your heart and be your companion. Perhaps your challenger makes you face the things within you that must change you in order for you to express your highest good. Maybe fate brings you an ally in the form of a wonderful new project or a challenger in the form of a failed business. No matter which form they take, all are perfect expressions of fate inviting you into your destiny. Pay attention as your map unfolds now and remember that fate makes the map, but destiny is determined by the manner in which you engage your journey. And that's why they have to go on this path. Eight of water, journey of discovery, letting go and seeking a deeper meaning and greater authenticity beyond superficiality. All that glitters isn't gold and all that I know is that I always deserve authentic riches. The gold that fills me with joy, abundance and understanding. I fearlessly pause to re-examine where I have been, where I am and where I might go. Now I consciously choose the path that is right for me instead of the one that seems likely to draw me onto it or the one I feel I ought to walk. I am true to my heart. I've come as far as I can and I can leave by the wayside, the last pieces of illusion, the last bits of fear and shame. I will no longer hold on to what isn't right for me. I had a hard time reading the end of that. I had to, like, guys, this is what they're doing. And this is why we just, we continue on our path. We continue on our way. Like, <clears throat> way to go, divine masculine. Way to go, divine masculine. And if you're divine masculine watching this, way to go for you. Walking away, what no longer serves you. To reclaim yourself. No. Let's see what the masculine energy needs to let go of. Surrender stubbornness. If you're tensing up or taking a rigid stance about something, gently observe yourself and become more yielding. This will help you communicate more lovingly with others and yourself. One more. Surrender to divine timing. Sometimes divine timing may differ from your ego's timing. If a goal isn't manifesting fast enough, according to your ego, be patient and trust the universal flow. And that's for both, right? Feminine and masculine. And I know a lot of feminines, um, have to work on surrendering to divine timing as well as the masculine. That's where the patience is cultivated and the working with spirit. Thank you for joining me here today. Please check out um, the feminine reading as well. And 
I will join you again soon at School for the Fool. Take care.